Welcome to Jake's Savvy Moment, where you can learn tips and ideas on how you can improve your and your horse's development. Roll the tape. Today on Jake's Savvy Moment, we're gonna talk about the sequence of starting our riding patterns. We're gonna look at how we could go from a passenger lesson to starting to tip the nose, maybe the neck, and eventually lead the feet. Move from that into a really nice and loose serpentine. Begin some circles, and once we have that, we're gonna have some steering going so we can start to steer our horse out on the rail and focus on some more specific point to points, leading into our corners game, our cloverleaf pattern, and move on from there. Let's head out and ride some patterns. Beginning of our sequence, for the development of the horse, we're gonna look at just getting them going somewhere. So I'm gonna bring up that life in my body, smile with all four cheeks, okay. Turn that smile into a squeeze, smooch if I please, spank myself, spank my horse. I just want them to get going somewhere, okay. Once we get them going, we wanna start looking at could we tip their nose, maybe their neck, and eventually the feet are gonna start to follow. The horsemanship skills that you need to make sure that you have under control is the phases of that going, and then also that we're going to be lifting our reins, sliding down one rein, and then holding in a way that the horse can bend their nose and their neck and eventually follow with their feet. Once I'm going, I wanna play at this at a walk, a trot, and eventually a canter, and I wanna be able to just tip their nose and get out, okay, lift, tip their nose and get out. Now we're gonna move on to our serpentine. As we begin our serpentine, we already looked at how we're gonna lift, slide, and hold to tip the nose. We're gonna start looking at the neck and then the feet following now. Now I've laid out some cones to help you see my focus, but when I start a horse and I start moving into this pattern, I don't necessarily lay out cones. I start this really loose, a long serpentine. I might ride from one wall of the arena to the other, and allow the horse to just slowly start following little bits of my leadership and then move it to a tighter and tighter serpentine as we go. Why don't you watch, I'm gonna ride out and ride a serpentine for you. Now, when I start a horse, I slowly increase the level of difficulty. As you can see on the way back, I increase the frequency of the turns and changing of the bend in the horse. I also focus on beginning to get them to understand the reins first and slowly add in my legs so that they can recognize eventually my legs coming on before using the reins. Now, we're gonna go from the serpentine and look at riding some circles. Now as we move on from our serpentines to our circles, again, I'm gonna use the cone so that you can see my focus, but when I'm starting a horse, I may not use a cone and have a very tight, specific circle in the beginning. I might start really loose and find my way into being more particular about a specific circle in a specific spot at a specific size and eventually a specific speed or gait. We're gonna start with riding a circle, the inside of an inexperienced horse, and we're gonna push the hind quarters out to bring the nose in. That's using an indirect rein, so that means lifting, sliding, doing fingernails up, 
and across our body to move the hind quarters. And eventually, as I get onto my more experienced horse, I'm gonna ride the outside and push them around the circle. Let's take a look at riding some circles. Now that we've ridden some circles and we have some steering of moving the hind quarters and pushing the front feet, we're going to move out onto the rail and start riding some point-to-point -point corners and then lead into some cloverleaf. In my arena, we have these markers all the way around. They were here as the dressage letters. We've switched them to colored circles. And now we use them as point to point markers to stop. And it gives us lots of opportunities to practice lifting, sliding, and bending to a stop. We also then can use this to not build up too much steam on an extroverted horse that wants to go, go, go by not going too far and stopping at the next block. We can also use it to motivate a more introverted horse that doesn't want to go by having more frequent stops so they realize it's not such a big deal they don't have to go very far we might build up from stopping in every marker to skipping one then two then three and on and on i have markers set up that are red at the center line and green on the short side and i can stop at all of those and turn each time i reach one of those markers to build up to riding my cloverleaf pattern also, while riding the rail, I like to stop in the corners to build that as a sweet spot. And it allows me later to ride very deep into my corners because the horse isn't afraid of getting in there. Now, if your horse doesn't want to stay on the rail, I don't want you to use a direct rein and nag and tell him, tell him, tell him, get on the rail. We're going to use an indirect rein, lift, slide, fingernails up, put the hindquarters into the arena to put the nose on there indirectly and that puts the mind on the rail and they realize every time they think away they end up finding themselves thinking back to the rail now i'm going to go ride the rail and from here we're going to look at riding more on our cloverleaf now we're here at the center marker and we're going to look at making the turns on our cloverleaf notice i'm not quite yet to the box yet and i want to turn early when i'm coming off the wall so that I can drift onto the line, and I'm gonna turn late when I get to the other side at the wall, so my horse uses the wall to turn. I don't necessarily have to tell them to turn. Here we go. As we wrap up this savvy moment, I want to encourage you to ride these patterns, but don't get stuck doing just one. Eventually, I want you to use pattern integration, and we can start adding things like circles in the corner, stopping in the corner, stopping at each block, transitions at each block, maybe a circle at each block, a spin at each block, riding across the diagonals, changing up not just the clover leaf, but using the blocks to create lines throughout your arena like roadways and how we can turn at all those different lines and really create some fun variety for our horse, but we still have the consistency of similar patterns. I hope you learned a lot from looking at the sequence to help your horse's development and the horsemanship to help you be better for your horse. This has been another one of Jake's Savvy Moments.